Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with a very special guest. You've seen her work at Gulfstream Park with the Maryland Jockey Club at Fort Erie at the Meadowlands, a fantastic handicapper. Ashley, may you welcome the DRF. So excited to be here. This is a little bit of a change for, I guess, for me in general, but I'm really excited. And I know you know this, Dan, I use the DRF for basically everything I do when it comes to racing. So this is exciting. Well, we've got two exciting turf sprint stakes races at Gulfstream Park on the Christmas Eve card. We'll kick things off with the kickoff leg of the 20 cent rainbow pick six. It's race number four. Let's throw up the field for the Philly and Mayor division, the Abu Dancha. This is a hundred grander. We have a field of 10 and we have last year's winner in here, the number six, Miss J. McKay, who's been so consistent throughout her career for trainer Christophe Clement. I mean, she really has. You look at her, you know, age hasn't really been a factor. I'll say this year, I think in terms of trips to the winter circle, um, not what they were looking for, but uh, looking at what she's done at Gulfstream Park, you mentioned a pretty big run last year. We'll take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. And it's a bit rare in a turf sprint. You usually expect to see a lot of speed. The blue bar in time form U.S. parlance indicates that our friends there believe that this race will favor horses on or near the early lead. And I think the most talented of the three speeds, certainly the one that drew best, is the four Miss Oramet. I completely agree. I mean, in terms of speed, these are the three horses that I really saw as well, but she certainly is probably the quickest. Um, a sub-22 opening quarter is certainly within her scope. We've seen that time and time again, and I think for her, big thing is this is a, going to be on the turf, and she's been on the tapete in her last several efforts. That's an excellent point. While she's done very, very well on the tapita, she does seem more effective on the grass. Let's start things off in post-position order with a horse cutting back in distance, the number one phantom vision. And I usually don't like horses cutting all the way back to five-eighths of a mile on turf, but it's worth noting, phantom vision has gone route to sprint effectively in the past. All three of her lifetime wins have come at five-eighths of a mile. Yeah, it is worth noting. I think I kind of agree with you on this angle. I would say as of late, that sort of sprint route uh, switch up hasn't been working in her favor. I thought last time out at Keeneland, it was a respectable effort. She was forwardly placed, but she did tire in the end. So hopefully the cutback helps her. Uh, the maker barn has been on fire at Gulfstream, so that also plays in her favor. Listen, if they could get endorsed to win off a 23 race losing streak as they did earlier this week, nothing is out of the maker's scope right now. Uh, Phantom Vision, I do think class is up fairly well. The fourth place finisher from that last race did come back to place in a graded stakes race. The Cardinal at Churchill with a 94 buyer. She has some tactical speed. Uh, maybe she can sit close to this moderate pace. I would agree. I think with that inside draw, that helps her chances as well. I mean, we've talked about speed. There's a lot of speed towards the outside of the starting gate as well. So uh, for me, I think it's going to be a bit of a stretch for her in here, but she does have the figures that suggest she does fit at least. The number two is Poseidon's Passion, and she's coming into this race in excellent form. She's won two of her last three races. Now all three of those races came on the Tapita surface. Let's watch her most recent effort. Uh, this is a solid handicap back in the middle of October. She has very good tactical speed. She worked out an in-out trip, and she runs right by the three-to-five favorite. It was a huge performance, and then when you mentioned she runs past Running Memories, who is kind of tallied an impressive resume herself, especially in South Florida, and Poseidon's passion had no problem kind of gearing on in the stretch. Big thing that we keep on saying it is the tapita. The turf does play differently, but I think uh, one thing that benefits her is kind of the position that I expect her to be in early on in the race. She won't be too far back. She, be, she should be close to it. Uh, the concern, though, the record at Gulfstream Park on the grass leaves something to be desired. And while running memories is a quality performer, five other horses came out of that last race. None of them hit the board in their very next start with a uh, best buyer of 76. So maybe other than running memories, that was a bit of a subpar field. This is a step up in class. Her buyers have improved recently. Do you think it's more due to the tapita surface or do you think she's just reaching peak maturity right now? It's such a tough call to kind of say what it is. To me, I do think... Partially, it is the Tapita. You kind of look at those races that she's been coming out of. I, I like that last time she could finally turn the tables on running memories because wasn't able to do that two start back. It was really close. Uh, but I, I think it's been the Tapita race at that five and five and a half distance. And um, I mentioned the Gulfstream Park turf record. And then you look at her elsewhere. Her turf record in the past is pretty strong as well. She's a five time winner. So it's, it's really tough to kind of uh, figure out exactly why she's so good as of late. Now, a horse that's hoping that our friends at Time Form US are completely wrong.
with the pace projector is the number three Mamba Wamba because she is the epitome of a one run closer. And it worked out last time when they switched her to the Takeda surface. Uh, this is her on the far outside swinging past everybody. And she can do this given a fast pace. We saw this in her North American debut around this time last year in a first level allowance on the turf pace she came with a run but in a bulky field like this without much pace she's going to need a little bit of racing luck and a little bit of race flow yeah, you summed it up perfectly she's going to hope that they go as fast as they possibly can because looking at those two races at Gulfstream park regardless of the surface they went very quick to that opening quarter and even the half so uh, the faster the better i mean i love what i've seen from her at Gulfstream park and i think just seeing how she did on the turf course, uh, she posted a good number. I think she faced some you know, decent competition in that race, but that was her first start here. Uh, the other thing that I sort of point out with her, I, I do like her a bit in this spot, uh, maybe in the exotics, but she has that good race, sort of bad race tendency a little bit as well, but maybe suck it off the freshening uh, can help her chances. One of the expected pace setters is the classy number four, Miss Aram, at 23 of 33 in the exacta. She's so, so consistent. Last time out, a bit of a subpar performance. She was on the lead in the Tapita, and she did tire. She did win on Tapita two starts back, overcoming a bit of a slow break, rushing up to push the pace, and kept on going. But like you, as we mentioned earlier on, I just think she's more effective on turf. I think this freshening will benefit her. She's run well fresh in the past. She has. I mean, we saw it kind of last summer. She had most of the summer and fall off, came back in early uh, December at Gulfstream Park and was just much the best. And that was on the grass. And I completely agree. I think she is a better mare on the turf. Uh, I was disappointed last time out. I thought she would have been able to just hold on a bit more. But you see that kind of the half of 44 and, and one, it, it was swift. I just think um, grass is key. Going to get a new rider, Paco L Lopez. We know as speed is his game. So maybe kind of the change of circumstances will help her. Ocean Safari is our number five, and this is a uh, filly that's going to be cutting back into a true sprint for the first time. The seven and a half furlong race is at Gulfstream. They're around two turns. So this is a sharp cutback in distance for Ocean Safari. She is a stakes winner on the Gulfstream turf course, but I'm concerned that this trip might be too sharp for her. I think this is too sharp for her as well. I think she's kind of uh, in, in deep waters in this spot not only the distance, but the kind of the, the more seasoned horses that she'll be facing. And the big thing is, is she was hyped around Gulfstream when she kind of started her career and she was very strong in her first four to five efforts. I know she fell flat in the sweet champ, but she came back in the honey rider and won. But we're talking about mile races seems to be her distance. And I think she's lost a step in her last couple. She's only making her third start for trainer Jose D'Angelo. But this is a, a tough start to hopefully get back on track. Our defending champion is up next. That's the number six, Miss J. McKay. And I think it's fair to say she's the horse to beat in this race. She's the class of this race. And while you mentioned that she's only one for seven in 2022, she's had some trips in her races. To me, I thought she had a difficult journey two starts back and that smart and fancy up at Saratoga where it looked like the jockey wanted to get out in the upper stretch. She was sort of hemmed in and then was steadied in between horses. I'm not sure she had a chance to strut her best stuff that day. A little bit of trouble last time out at Pimlico as well. I agree. I think the Smart and Fancy is kind of a key race for her. She did take a lot of respect. She was post-time favorite in there. You look at the winner, Caravelle, who doesn't need any introduction to say the least when we saw what this one had been able to do uh, at Breeders' Cup weekend. But the big thing, she only missed by a length and a half. You, you kind of commented on that troubled trip. And she's tactical enough that I know in her last two or three starts, she's been pretty far off the pace. I think in this race, kind of looking in that pace scenario, I would expect Tyler Gaffleon to have her closer to it. And she's kind of a, a type that that should be fine for her. So you took the question right out of my mouth. I was going to ask you if you were going to be concerned about the lack of pace that she's shown in her last few races, but I tend to agree. I think that if you go back in her running lines, you see that she can adapt if the pace is slow and Tyler is such a good jockey. I think he's going to have Miss J. McKay in contending position when the real racing commences. Imagery is the number seven off the Mark Cassie claim. You don't see Mark claim too many, but Imagery has been a solid horse throughout most of her career and she's returning to turf off of a Peter effort up at Woodbine. She's another one, though. May need a little bit of pace help. She's a closer. I like her better on turf than synth, though. She might need a, a bit of pace help in here. You kind of look at her two wins uh, in 2022. They're both sprinting on the turf more recently, though, going that three quarters of a mile over the good surface. And she had one horse beaten early on. She was respected at the windows. 
she ran away with it in the end. Now, last time out, it was on the Tapita. Uh, I didn't think it was a great effort. There was nothing really for me to take away out of that performance. But you mentioned Mark Cassie really doesn't claim horses. So I thought this was interesting. Uh, first off the claim, not only to be protected, but to be in a stakes race. And she's won her last two on the turf. Arad Ortiz takes them out on a 10 to 1 shot in a stakes race. Spun Glass is up next. I've always been a big fan of this horse covering the Mid Atlantic region for DRF. Let's watch Spun Glass's most recent race at Laurel going five and a half. Now, it's an interminable stretch, it never ends at Laurel when you go five and a half on the turf to the second wire. And right here, it looks like Spun Glass is just going in place, but she's eventually going to kick it in and she's going to run an okay second. They weren't going very fast early and the pace did not come back to her. You know what? I think this is kind of a key race where watching the replay, I think, speaks more than just looking at the past performances and looking at the run line because I thought she ran a really strong race. It's only missed by a neck. And the good thing about her is, you know, she figures to be not, not, and last early on, but she should have some kind of a good tactical position, maybe mid pack, but she at least can gear down in the stretch and kind of make up that ground where some horses, uh, they tend to flatten or they, they don't really move up. So for me, uh, she's been consistent. Consistency, I think too, as a five-year-old, I actually think she's better as a five-year-old than she was last year. I am a little concerned that the five furlongs is a bit sharp. I do like her better at five and a half. Now, DRF, of course, lumps in five and a half and five, and I will have disagreed. Hey, I've been here 25 years, Lashley. What are they going to do? Get rid of me? I think that five and a half and five is a little bit different. I agree, especially you've mentioned kind of these uh, these courses that she's been over. Laurel, that's a, that's a pretty long stretch run for her. I think that helped her last time. I think two starts back at the Belmont and Aqueduct meet. Maybe six furlongs isn't for her either, but five and a half has been her sweet spot. Look at her, her wins this year. That's been the distance for her. Now, it's possible we've seen the best race already from horses like Miss J. McKay and Miss Aura Met. I have a feeling we have yet to see the best from our final two entrants, the nine Static Fire, the 10 Stony Point. I believe they're all upside. Static Fire won on dirt last time out, but she's done some good work sprinting on turf. Two starts back in the Music City, I think six and a half on a very testing turf course is a little bit tough for her. I'm willing to draw a line through that effort. I'm willing to, too. And I think, honestly, she really hasn't run what we'd say is a bad race. I mean, I know they've tried her on both dirt and turf. She's been successful over both surfaces. I like that she comes in here off a win and has had that bit of a freshening now. And you mentioned that last turf effort. If you look at the race at Kentucky Downs, uh, Freedom Speak started her career at Gulfstream Park and has turned out to be pretty nice. Happy Soul, uh, the third place finisher, came back to win. So we know the competition that she's faced at Kentucky Downs is fierce. It was also going six and a half. So I'm curious to see her at this five ace distance. Completely in the field is the number 10 Stony Point for Hall of Famer Shug McGahey, a horse that should show some speed. Now, she was the beaten favorite last time out at Laurel going that long five and a half. Let's watch that race right now. I really didn't see too many excuses here as the favorite. When Shug goes to Maryland and puts Forrest Boyce on, he means business, and they're usually loaded for bear. Stony Point looks very comfortable controlling this reasonable pace, just can't see out the stretch. Does finish ahead of a couple of minor next out winners. Yeah, she, she does. I think the big thing to kind of look at the, the pace around the race there, right? She was kind of being, you know, pressured by the horse that I believe ends up in fourth in here, the number two. And I thought it was good. I still think she should have won that race. I know she gets beat by Hollywood Walk, but it looked like in that kind of that replay highlights, right? It looked like she was kind of home free and she just didn't have it in the end. It was her first start since July. Now she's just going to be making her second start since July. So maybe that was part of it. But another one, very consistent. The only bad effort was going seven ace. And curious thing to see now is you see five and a half tired a little bit. Is the five ace sort of what she needs? It might be. It's been a while since we've seen her at the distance. We kick off the 20 cent rainbow pick six on Saturday at Gulfstream Park with the Abu Dancha. Let's take a look at our top selections in here. She's so consistent, Miss J. McKay. We believe she's adaptable to the pace scenario. She'll be firing on in the lane. That's for sure. And it's actually funny looking at her top picks. They're kind of rivals here at Gulfstream Park because they have faced each other a couple of times. I just think getting back to Gulfstream, I think it's going to suit her well. She did win this last year. And I think we've talked about it two, three races back. They look better if you watch the replay than they do on paper. So I think she's going to kind of get back into form.
I'm hoping that pace makes the race for Miss Aura Matt, that time form US is corrected. She doesn't have to exert too much energy in the early part of this race. Getting back to turf will help. And we've talked about her record. She's also very, very consistent. 6439 for Ashley, 4962 for me, one of two turf sprint stakes races at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. It's the Abu Dansha, and we're kicking off the rainbow pick six. Good luck.